One of the most useful tools that I've ever used here with the adaptive components is a, a three-point arc that I cooked up. And uh, basically what it does, it's pretty simple. If you drag it out into your project environment, you can pick the center of the arc, the radius of the arc, and the angular extension of the arc. Really dumb and simple, right? think that this would come natively in Revit. But sorry, unfortunately it doesn't. So I've had to make my own, but with adaptive components you can do that. The advantage of this tool is that you can you can pick something, you can pick a radius, you can pick an angular extension, and what's going to happen is that your arc that you make this way is going to remain parametrically associated with that element. So you can move around your center, and your arc is going to adjust accordingly. And for making really complex geometry, or even moderately complex geometry, having a really stable arc like this is super necessary to do everything from making just an arc, like I'm showing right here, or doing things like hosting by intersection, which I'll also just show a quick example of. And if I want to host something by an intersection with this line and this arc, I can go in and I can put, I can host a point on this loaded family, and I can still do the basic host by intersection maneuvers so that that point is going to stay attached to or associated with this line. So I'm just going to do a quick exercise to show you guys how to make one of these yourself, although I'm going to supply it also on the website. Uh, so if you're going to open a new adaptive component, and you're going to get a reference line with 3D point snapping and just make yourself a triangle. You're starting off with a triangle because you essentially need three points to define uh, an arc. So I'm going to make those adaptive and I'm going to take that uh, chain of lines and I'm going to create a form element from them. And I'm just going to make a plane now this is actually going to be basically a fake work plane, and I'm going to make this so that it's something that's a little bit easier to deal with. I'm going to take the glass material, and I'm going to make something that's just gone, I call it. And this is just to give myself a, a sort of translucent-y looking work plane to work on. And so just so I know that this isn't real geometry that I want to use, but it's just going to be something I'm going to reference. I'm also going to make this not visible in the project environment where I load it. And that's because I don't want a triangle in the end. What I want is I want an arc. So now I need to define my arc. And I found in the past, through a little trial and error, that it works best to start with a circle. So I'm going to get a model line circle and I'm going to set the work plane of it to here. And this is my new work plane of my triangle. And I'm going to pick this center of point number one, and I'm just going to go out. Oh, but I did it. Hold on, I'm just going to do that again because I don't want it with... Um, I don't want to make a surface from closed loops. So I'm just going to make sure that I've still got that as my active work plane. Got my tool to make a circle in there. So it doesn't look like anything special, but I'm going to pull this and you're going to see that my circle is going to move with it. So I've got it now out of plane or out of plane with the reference plane. And, and the next thing I want to do is make sure that I've got this radius, the radius of this circle should match this point because I'm going to place point one point two and then angle. So I want point two to coincide with the radius of this circle. So I'm going to need to make this a dimension and give this a parameterized radius. So I'm going to label that. I'm going to call it radius. And it's going to be an instance parameter because it's going to change every time I place it. Now I also need to set up a reporting parameter between point one and point two. That's basically so that the family knows how far the distance is from point one to point two. So I'm going to get my Align Dimension tool, and I'm going to set the work plane to, oh, where is it? I'm tabbing through to that work plane. That's the work plane that is shared by points 1 and 2. So I'm going to make sure that I'm tabbing in and selecting my adaptive point. And you can see that down here in the status bar. I'm tabbing until I get adaptive point, and 
tabbing until I get adaptive point. Has to be to the adaptive points, and I'm going to add a parameter. I'm just going to call it R, and it's going to be a reporting parameter. Seems pretty simple. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to set my radius to be equal to my reporting parameter, like that. And you see, because I have a nice strong reporting parameter because it's between adaptive points, it allows me to drive other formulas. There. And now when I move this point, my circle moves with it. Now, I could do this right now, and I could have a parametric circle. I could load this into my project, and shazam, I've got this parametric circle, which can also be useful for people. Um, but I've found that it's more useful to have a parametric arc for a lot of uses. So you could stop right now, but we're going to keep on going here. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to split this circle into an arc. And the reason I'm doing it as an arc is I've just found that they're more stable in the end. So I'm going to get my split tool. I'm going to split it here. I'm going to split it here. And I'm going to tab into this guy. And I'm going to stretch it over and align it and lock it. And I'm going to align it and I think this is the right way. Sometimes I have to do this a couple times to make sure I get the right sequence. Now, let's see how that worked. So far so good. I'm not really worried about this line off axis. And I'm going to take this part of my circle and I'm just going to make it not visible. Also going to make it not a reference. And I'm also going to make this chain of reference lines, ironically enough, not a reference. Because I don't really want to snap to those guys. What I want to snap to is I want to snap to this circle when I use it. So I'm going to load this into my project. I'm going to overwrite the existing. And you can see now I've got my parametric arc. So I can tab into this guy, for instance, and I can slide it down. Oh, and it broke. Hold on. Do a little troubleshoot. I'm not quite sure what the problem was there, but um, let me tab in there again. I don't think I was tabbed into the right piece. So I'm moving around the center, and my arc is moving around as I want it to. You might find that things fall apart when you get the arcs, you know, sort of over into here when they go past 180. Um, there, that's what happened. I just got it farther out, and so it starts to sort of fall in upon itself. But when you're doing arcs that are sort of between 0 and 180 degrees, it works just fine. Then you can grab this guy and move him up. See my radius changing. You can grab this guy, you can move him over. You see my angle changing. And that is how you make a constrained arc by three points.